pleased to be joined by the manager of the champion, world champion, Kansas City Royals, Ned Yost. And let me ask you this, Ned, 2014, you get to the World Series, but the Giants win. Always a tough road to get back, but right. you guys stormed the gates, you we got did. back, and you won it. What kind of redemption was that for you? Oh, I mean, it, it, was, it was funny because, um, you know, at the end, of, when we lost in 2014, I mean, it was a horrible feeling. I mean, you were so close. We were 90 feet away from tying that ball game up in Game 7, and we were just so convinced we were going to win. And, uh, you know, Salvador gets up, hits a pop-up, and then Sandoval catches a ball and falls on the ground, and we're all like, what happened? Wait, wait, wait. We just lost, you know? Uh, it, but our mindset was, okay, from that minute on, we're getting back and we're winning this thing. Uh, and when we got to spring training, our players, their mindset was that they wanted to win the division, they wanted to win home field advantage, and they were going to win the World Series. And from day one uh, of spring training, all throughout the 162-game season, their focus and their intensity and their energy never wavered away from that. Uh, and at the end of the year, they accomplished everything they wanted to accomplish. They ended up winning the division for the first time uh, as a Kansas City Royals. We ended up winning home field advantage with the best record in the American League and ended up winning the World Series. So it was a special year, um, but it was just something that I think everybody knew that we could accomplish and set out to accomplish from day one. You go out there and you win the championship. You get to celebrate. You get to have a parade. David Cohn, Kansas City kid, he works for us now. He still has family and friends in Kansas City. He said to me, Everyone is telling me you would not believe what that day was like. You were there. What was that day like? You, you, you wouldn't believe what it was like. <laughs> you know, we got there and we were thinking, okay, this is going to be great. You know, Kansas City, uh, you know, winning a world championship there, we knew it would always be special. And we were thinking um, that we would have somewhere between 300 and 400,000 people out there. Well, they doubled it. There was 800,000 people out there. Uh, it was just absolutely crazy. Um, I think our players were shocked with the amount of people that were there, with the excitement that was generated. They let schools out, so I think every young, you know, young child in Kansas City was there cheering at the top of their lungs. And I think it's a day that uh, none of us will ever forget. It was that special. Now, Ned, I can't help but notice that ring on your finger there, but that was last year's ring. Last year's. You told us this year's ring is going to be pretty special. They scaled back on that one. From they what did I last year when we, when I was talking to Dayton and Kevin Ulick, our president. They said, you know what, we scaled back on the ring a little bit, so when we win the World Championship next year, we're going to really go all out. And I'm thinking, you know how tough it is to get back to the World Series again? You know? Um, but I thought, okay, and we got them opening day, and I looked at the ring, and I thought, man, it's absolutely gorgeous. How can they scale back on it? Uh, and then after we won, I went up to see Kevin, and the new rings are just, I mean, it's real. They're spectacular how pretty they are. They're gold, they're bigger, they're all diamonds and sapphires, and, uh, it's going to be a very, very special thing to wear for years to come. And you're going to be wearing that because you had this nice blend of homegrown talent with some free agents brought in mid-season, some guys right. that helped you out, big names. But let me ask you, your template seems to have been, except the template for other teams too, like the Yankees, back into the bullpen, right. make it a six-inning, seven-inning game. Right. Is that something not only that you feel you're a big part of, but that you can continue? Well, absolutely. Uh, again, you know, being in Kansas City, the Dayton always says we never use a small market as an excuse you know but we've got to do things differently you know we can't go out and spend uh, you know 200 million dollars on a top line starter you know but we can build the best bullpen that we can and from the minute that I got here Dayton said you know what I want to do as a GM is I want to fill a team full of homegrown pro uh, prospects guys that are tremendously athletic uh, and can catch the ball and with pitching pitching defense athleticism that's what we're going to try to do and from uh, the moment that uh, you know I got here, that's what he was focused on. Now, on the trades, we were looking for athletic players when we traded Zach Greinke. We got Escobar, shortstop, and Lorenzo Cain. You know, up the middle guys that were tremendously athletic, and coincidentally, you know, guys that were, you know, the back-to-back -back American League championship, uh, you know, MVPs the last two years out of one trade. Um, Salvador Perez, who's tremendously big kid very very athletic and he's put together a group of athletic guys that can really really play defense has really built the back end of our bullpen because you know we developed a couple of young pitching prospects in Ventura and Duffy you know but to go out and spend huge money on top of the line starters is probably not going to happen uh, so we've done a great job of you know 
having power at the back end of the game so that if uh, you know our starters can get us through five or six innings and we're tied or with the lead we feel very very confident that we can win that game but you know I think uh, you know teams know two things when they come to play us is that they better hit the ball very very hard because if you don't we're going to catch it and throw you out and you better have the lead after the sixth inning or you're probably going to lose. Ned, when you're sitting in the dugout as a manager and times get tense you want to be able to turn to your right or your left and feel confident. You had a guy in your dugout Dave Island that we know well pitched for the Yankees coached for the Yankees. How important was he to the success of your team this year. Extremely important um, Dave Island uh, quite frankly Dave Island my coaches it's the best group of coaches you know that I've ever had and, and really I think for me I really started utilizing their expertise and their abilities about midway uh, of the season a year and a half ago you know we really started to get their input and then. Um, found out how much easier it is to manage a game when you got a guy like Dave, when you got a guy like Don Wakamatsu and Pedro Gafal and Dale Swain. You know, uh, Dale's managed at the big league level, Walks managed at the big league level, Dave's won a world championship, phenomenal pitching coach. So to be able to lean on those guys uh, for in game decisions has been, you know, invaluable for me. Uh, you know, they've helped me out a ton and I feel like I've gotten. Uh, or I've become a much, better, a much better manager once I started listening to them a little bit more. Let's turn the page to 2016. When you have a team that won the World Series, oftentimes you think there won't be a lot of holes, but you guys will lose some guys to free agency. Right. So what are the needs for 2016? Well, you know, we're going to lose two important guys in our lineup, really. I mean, Johnny Cueto was a guy that, uh, you know, came in and did a great job for us. But, you know, quite frankly, when we got Johnny, we got Johnny to help us win a World Series. You know, um, uh, we're going to lose uh, in, in our everyday lineup probably Alex Gordon and Ben Zobris. You know, there's a lot of play on them. You know, we're still hoping that we can get them back. Um, but the majority of our nucleus of our club is going to be intact. Our young players uh, who continue to get better and better. The Mustakas, the Hosmers, the Salvador Perez, the Escobars, the Canes, you know, the Dysons, the Paulo Orlandos, those types of guys. We're going to have the same depth and strength in our bullpen. Um, our starting pitching is going to be basically the same with the exception of Chris Medlin another year stronger who uh, you know before he hurt his arm with Tommy John he was the ace of the Atlanta Braves staff we expect him to come back very very strong we've just signed Chris Young back um, you know who had a great year for us last year so we're going to have to find a corner outfielder um, um, we've got Omar Infante coming back who I think is going to have a big bounce back year that can play second base but you know it's like I, I continue to say you know we don't have to find the best players to fill these holes we just have to find the right players uh, and Dayton has a real knack at doing that and there was a lot of head scratching last year when Dayton signed Kendris Morales and Alex Rios and Chris Young and Edison Volquez why are you signing those guys those guys are washed up they're never been any good and each and every one of those guys played integral parts in us winning a world championship and were tremendous producers all year long so it's not about finding the best guys it's just about finding the right guys that fit your program that fit your your, your chemistry inside that clubhouse and fit your energy and fit your focus to help you win a championship. Well, the Royals are on a tremendous roll. Congratulations. Enjoy everything that comes with a championship, and thanks for the time. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.